Hi, this is Gia Shaman of Noasic, creator of AirHDL. And today I will show you how you can use AirHDL to create a um, register file for integrating into a sync system. So what I have here is the base sync system that comes with Vivado. And I'm going to create a simple register file with, with just two registers and integrate it into that block diagram here. So to get started, let's uh, fire up the web browser. And uh, this is their HDL. And I will create a new register map and call it MyRex, for instance. I could add a description here, my register map. Uh, this is just for documentation purposes. And um, I need to create a, or to provide a base address here. So for that, I will well, I, I could just make something up here, but I will look into uh, the Vivado address editor. And I will copy one of the addresses and uh, paste it here. Oh, as you see, there is inline validation here. So I will make this a one and remove this and we're good to go. So this is the register map that I just created. And uh, if I'd like to change anything like the base address or the name, I can just go to edit register map here and then I could change whatever I want. So this register map is empty for now. And I will, as I said, I will create a control register and just call it control at address offset zero from the base address and this is a read write register which means it can be read and written from the the, the cpu and uh, let's go create this register and i will create a second register which i will call status at address offset four and this will be a read-only register, so it will only be read from the uh, CPU and the value will be provided by the user logic. So here we have our uh, two registers. I can see here the, the access mode, so, so the first one is read-write and the, the second one is read-only. And uh, as with anything in Air HDL, if you change uh, your mind, you can just edit and uh, make it, for instance, a write-only register. And that's, uh, that's just a few clicks. But I will use read-only for now. So now let's go into that control register. It's empty for now. So I will provide, a, I will add a field and just call this field um, LED. So let's say I want to connect um, the output of that register to LEDs. So I will um, create an LED field which starts at bit offset zero and has a width of four bits. Uh, I can provide a reset value here. And yeah, create that field. There it is. First lower four bits of the control register are now assigned to this LED field. And same for status register. I will add a field and call it, let's say for instance, button. So if this is something that I want to connect to push buttons, for instance, and let's say I have two of them. Um, this is how you create the button field. So now let's go back to the register map. Uh, what I can do now is um, run design rule checks if I'd like, just to check that there are no collisions between the registers or no name conflicts, stuff like that. What you're seeing here is the revision uh, number. So this is a number that gets incremented every time you change anything in the register map. Uh, so if you change the name of a field or address of something or even just the access mode, um, as I did earlier, the revision ID will get um, incremented. Um, and this is very useful to check that generated files, for instance, a C header and the VHDL component are from the same revision of the 
register map. So now I'm done with the um, register map entry and I can go ahead and download files. So I can download the C header. I'm not going to use it now, but I can just download it to show it to you. Uh, I will need the VHDL package and the VHDL component for the um, uh, Vivado design. And uh, let's have a look at these files. They're here. So the C header is, uh, it's in another window. So the C header is um, is here. You can see that you have um, the revision number that we just discussed. Uh, there is a, and then there are uh, defines for all the constants that you would care about in your software. So for instance, the base address of the uh, register file, you have the offsets of every register. And uh, for every register field, you have the bit offset at which the, the field starts within the register. You have the width, you have a bit mask if you need to clear the field or set all the bits of the field, and you have the reset value. Uh, so this is the C header. What we have next is the VHDL component. So with the AXI4 interface and then the user ports that connect to the user logic. And we have a VHDL package, which uh, is similar in content to the C header. So you have all the register uh, and field definitions. So now we need to integrate that into our Vivado design. And this is quite easy actually. So I, I just need to add the sources here. So add files and uh, I will need to add um, both the component and the package. And I, I could copy them into the project because they are somewhere else right now. And finish. So yeah, it's, it's here. It's uh, imported. It's updating something. And then I will... Um, go to the block diagram and add a module and uh, well uh, the Rex uh, is the only one who sh uh, which shows up here so I will use that one and um, there it is here it is here and uh, there is a designer assistance um, available so I will just use that to connect the AXI for bus of the register file. So that's done right now. And let's see if I can zoom a little bit. Yeah, so you can see that Vivado automatically connected the AXI for bus um, and the clock and the reset. And what you also see on this component are the um, uh, ports that uh, com correspond to the register fields. So if you remember, we had a status register which has a button field, which was two bits. So this is this is this connects to this uh, register field. And we had a control register with a LED field, uh, which was uh, four bits uh, in width. So this is it. And then there are strop signals here that can be used to detect um, read or write accesses to these uh, fields. So if you if you use a logic needs to know that um, a field has been read, for instance, then you would use this signal. I'm not going to use it right now. I'm just going to connect the status register to an external port and the uh, same for the LED, make external. And you see, you see that uh, Vivado has created the uh, corresponding ports. And now I can zoom, zoom out again. And um, that's it. Um, that's how easy it is to create a new AXI4 register bank in RHDL and uh, integrate it into um, Vivado block diagram. 
thanks for watching and uh, check out rhdl.com if that sounds interesting to you.